Well, welcome back to Bolton Wanderers. I don't think I thought back in I think 2003 when you left we'd see you back here, but clearly a very important week for the football club and also for sports. Show. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we're delighted to finally get this uh, the, trans the transaction um, over the line. And uh, I think for everybody at the football club, not just the, uh, the powers that be, but the fans and the staff who are, you know, have been through uh, a long period of uncertainty. So uh, we're really delighted. From your perspective, how tough has that been? Because people have said all sorts of things, this isn't going to happen, the money's not there, mm. you know, loads of fingers have been pointed and yet you signed on the dotted line and you are now. We, uh, we've been in this from uh, a long time ago, probably six months in all. And um, when uh, our name was mentioned uh, quite a while back, that uh, you can't deny something that you're interested in, and uh, it's not fair. And, uh, and then there's been a, a real sort of um, race, if you like, um, and many uncertain times where the dynamics changed in the, uh, in the transaction. Um, probably not through anyone else's fault or, or any, uh, anyone um, responsible for that, but it's been a long process, a very long process. And you, know, and you can see why when you come to this football club um, and you see the history um, and the recent history of the transactions which have been going on for the, for the benefit of the football club. You know, there's been lots of different um, sales, if you like, of, of equity um, and the, uh, the things which are related to the club, which have needed to, to survive. So it's not going to be an easy process. But we've been in there from a very early stage and we've tried to do it as um, calmly and as uh, more beneficial for the club. How much did your relationship with this football club, the fact you know about how great it is and you play for the football club, mean that you perhaps didn't walk away when those times were tough and perhaps things weren't going right? I think there's been loads of times when I felt that um, it wasn't going to happen. Um, but stay true to uh, what we felt was right to do, uh, keep it calm and, uh, and, and basically talk to the people, communicate right. Uh, there's been lots and lots of different things going on behind the scenes and many people, you know, allegedly trying to, uh, I think Eddie was quoted as 50 different companies trying to buy this football club. But um, we've, we've stayed strong um, in, our, in our, what we thought was right to do. And, um, and it's, it has been difficult. It's been incredibly emotional as well because I've got an attachment with the club. So for me, the, the uh, responsible, um, for being calm and, and saying doing the right things has always been, you know, paramount to me and our ethics as well, which we've we've not we've not made false promises we, we couldn't um, fulfil. We've just done uh, the right things at the right times. I think a difficult thing on Monday when we kind of saw the analysis through the court yeah. was we were told that one of the investors had stepped aside and then suddenly everyone thinks it's going to fall through. But explain that whole process and what's happened to kind of turn it around. I don't know if you've got long enough. I really don't know. <laughs> Um, we've always had a, we've had to have a plan A and a plan B because of the dynamics changing and uh, we've always been um, aware that certain things could happen um, and the process isn't easy, it's really not easy. Uh, I've learnt a hell of a lot um, about um, the business side of football clubs um, in the last six months which um, has been a great education for me. We've had to really be aware that things will change quite quickly and daily. So um, we've, we've adapted to that and I think we've done the right thing. You're working alongside Ken Anderson. Explain yeah. his role in this and, and what he kind of brings to the party. Ken brings a great knowledge of football. Um, over the years he's been involved with various football clubs. Uh, I've known Ken since I was a, fo a footballer back in, uh, in even 20 years ago. I knew Ken. I have a good relationship with him. Um, he's always um, been um, aware of what's been going on through Sportshield with me. Um, and he said, look, you know, once you've got to a certain stage, um, we'll come in. So, uh, as I say, there's been many conversations with different parties about, you know, fulfilment of what they say they can do. Um, and as I think Eddie said, we were the only company, uh, the only consortium to come to it with, with the right finances in the right places and to be able to fulfil what the football league would want and for the transaction. Is the money there? Is there enough money there? And and are we going to be in a situation where this is repeated? For this, football this, this league, instability? the football league have seen everything they needed for this football club to survive, and that is in championship and in football league uh, championship one. Okay, so they've seen everything they need to be satisfied, which tells you that there is. Unfortunately, today's social media um, tells many different stories and um, false, some false, 
because I'm true. But the most important thing is the powers that be, Eddie Davis, Trevor Birch, the Football League, everybody has seen our intentions, what is there financially and um, for this season and next, and they are satisfied. And I imagine you wouldn't be sitting here talking to me now if you didn't think this was a stable thing to do. You're not going to put your head above the parapet and say, a, I'm coming to save Bolton if it's not going to It's a happen. huge pressure to, to say, OK, I want to go and buy Bolton Wanderers Football Club and actually doing it. Um, I feel a huge sense of achievement, uh, as well as pride and honour that we could have done this and we achieved it. Many times we thought we may have not have done that. And um, you know, people around me have seen a different person in the last six months. Um, but a serious person who, who wanted this transaction to happen. And I'm very proud to, to have done it. I really am. Um, not just for the people who are in this club, who I know. Um, and it would have been wrong of me to, um, to give them false hope. And as I say, if you, if you make promises and you can't achieve, then it's, it's detriment to you. We've done what we needed to do to get this football club in a safe and secure future, which is vital, vital for the football club. Look at it, it's amazing. This is an international arena in, 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 uh, in development. I really believe that. It's, it's a football club, a great football club, steeped in history. And the people here, you know, uh, are reliant on people who know about the football club, who do the work behind the scenes to find out about the football club. We've done that. We've worked absolutely night and day and through the night to achieve this. So for the next sort of 48 hours, I'm going to try and enjoy it. And um, hopefully the team will win on, on Saturday against our rivals. And uh, let the football do the talking now. And um, we'll, we'll hopefully be able to uh, support the team and the manager um, in the right way um, and, uh, and look forward to a bright future for the club. The whole process has seen the, the fans unite like never before. It's yes. a single voice. They've come together. Mm -hmm. Are you looking to work with them going forward? Because they'll want to know that. Uh, yeah, I've spoken to the Supporters there. Trust, some of the uh, guys there. Um, there will be meetings in the future. It was explained to Eddie that there, was, uh, there may be a future relationship um, if they get to where they want to be. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, the fans have got a voice. They're the club. You know, they're the future fans as well. The, the young kids who, who come here with their parents, they're the future. So we need to work together um, and find out what's achievable. But the most important thing was this club was still has a heartbeat, and, um, and that's important to me. You mentioned social media. It's not been very kind to the former owner, Eddie Davis. I mean, you clearly know him very well. Yeah. From being a player for yep. him to, to these negotiations. I mean, what would you say about the man? And clearly he's now your honorary president, so he's going yeah. to still be involved. For a man to do what he's done for this football club over the many years, you know, um, through thick and thin, the, the, uh, the side of it is that he's put a hell of a lot of money into this football club. I don't think I will ever know um, the time and effort and the amount of money that he has. It can't always be about money. It's emotional. He's a fan of the football club. So he's, his emotional uh, state has been tested to the max, I would think. He's got to give up his livelihood, which not many people will ever see that amount of money in their lives, you know, but he's also selling the club, um, which he loves. And that's, that's a lot to give up. And um, he had to be right. So I take that as a big t testament to us that we've achieved that because it hasn't been easy. He, didn't, he wouldn't have wanted this to happen to the football club at all. The fans will know um, because they live by the season and the wins. You know. But behind the scenes, it's, it's a, this is a huge business. You know, for him to you know, look at it and say, OK, I'm not able to do this anymore. I don't want to do it anymore. Um, let's find the right buyers for it right people to take the club forward gives, makes me proud but also have a bit of empathy with Eddie that you know it's, a, it's an emotional thing for him and uh, you know um, he's very proud to what he's achieved at the club and we should remember that because he's kept it going and put it in the right times and unfortunately these things come to an end sometimes you know um, but I think he should be you know welcomed and, uh, and, and say congratulations Eddie you've achieved a great thing for the football club. The other key personality is the manager, Neil Lennon. He's been through a real yeah. tough time. It's not been easy for him at all. No. What does the future hold for Neil and, and how do you see I think, I think from our point of view, we, um, we, look at, we look and talk to Neil and say, you know, Neil, you know, we've got a certain number of games left in this division. There's no point making false promises to Neil. He knows, he'll know, you know, um, what he wants to do uh, with the team. They've played really well the performances. I've been to a lot of games lately. Um, and the performances have been good, the possession stuff has been excellent. 
it's turning those the possession stats into goal stats, uh, positive side of it. Um, there's some outstanding players uh, at this football club, they really are. And what I saw the other night was that they are still playing for the manager and, and that's important because um, they've not given up the players. I think it's, they've been through a hard times with uncertain futures, what they've got. Um, but football is a never changing scene, isn't it? And um, with players, but the most important thing now is they, they get confidence from there's somebody here who wants to back them and come in and, and take over the football club. Um, and hopefully it'll give them, a, give them that 1% edge for tomorrow's match. That'll be really important. The key thing is the transfer embargo will go. That might give you some leeway and bring in loans in, in the next fortnight. There's that's... still some work to be done. Um, as I said before, it's not just about buying, taking a bit of paper and uh, lifting something. There's work to be done behind the scenes to get that embargo lifted. When that is, it'll be uh, very nice for the football team. And then we'll look at that then. But I think from phase one, the achievement is, is making sure the club's got a heartbeat, a future. Phase two is then look at the next stage, which is the football side of it. And I know it's been difficult for the football club, clearly selling off the training ground, that's, yeah. but it's been important. And, and yeah. also the car park. But the one thing yeah. that hasn't been done is selling off the crown jewels, the key players here, mm. which maybe gives you a bit of optimism in trying to keep this football club uh, in the championship. Uh, from speaking to sort of Trevor Birch um, and even Brett Warburton, that um, there were a number of offers for players. Thankfully, the, uh, some key individuals didn't leave. Um, because the young prospects here are, are going to be the future of the club and from what I've seen they've got great futures if they carry on um, in their development uh, and playing the games and getting that experience, they really are. There's a number of people watching certain players, I know that. Thankfully we didn't, we didn't lose those players in, in January and um, we're going to need them. We're going to need everybody to pull together now and that's really important. You talked about having a plan A and a plan B for the takeover. Mm -hmm. Is that also for the future? In, in terms of the I think we have to be realistic. League One? Yes, I think we have to be realistic. When we were um, looking at our financials, that um, the the financials change in two divisions quite drastically. Um, so we had to plan for those. Um, and I'm sure, given time, we'll look at that for key individuals and players, etc. But at the moment, um, we're staring up the division and we want to climb as quick as we possibly can and that starts with three points hopefully tomorrow you know, and a, and a big crowd here to support the team. But it's not an impossible job, is it? 10 no, games, 10 points. it's 30 points. 41 points went down last year, I believe. Um, so that's achievable. It is achievable. So uh, that's the goal. And just finally talk about your role. It's not a typical Chief Exec role because I think you bring your football knowledge into mm. it so you'll have a little bit to do with the academy and also... Yeah, I think, I think in education the players who are coming to the club from the, from the youth right the way through, um, they, they want to be educated on not just about playing football, what makes a footballer, what, what makes a Bolton Wanderers footballer. So my experience hopefully will add something to it. I think it's key. Um, I've not many, met many board members with a pro licence, so, um, so that maybe, maybe changes the dynamics of me a little bit, but I'm here to support everybody. That's the most important part of it, and uh, have an eye as, you know, as the owner as well. And you know, and I know, people are suggesting, well, you, you might naturally want to become the next manager here. No. That's not the plan, no. is it? Just put that one No, ahead. I don't want to be the manager of this football club. I really don't. <laughs> yeah, it's been suggested to me, but no, I don't want to be the manager of this football club. It's too stressful. <laughs> so how excited are you are sitting here, knowing that this is yours now? Look around this place. It's amazing. That's why I wanted it in here, so you can see what's behind me. You know, this is what we've been fighting for. And when you see the smiles on the people's faces around the club, it means everything. Last point, you played for plenty of clubs. I think Bolton was perhaps the longest you spent at one club. What, what impression and, and mark did it leave on you, this place? Because there was some great um, times here with you and Sam. Yeah, when I drive on the M61 up to Junction 6 and you see the floodlights, it reminds me of the day I joined here, which was in 97. And I, I left my house in London, um, not really knowing what to expect. I'll never forget that feeling, and I still get it. I still get that feeling when I drive and I see the lights, I see the stadium, I want to walk down the tunnel, I want to walk into the offices. Um, I can't go on the pitch anymore, which uh, is a shame. But, um, you know, it, you get that tingling feeling. I get it. And that's what's um, brought me here. It's going to be a big day tomorrow. Local rivals. This mm. place, I think, is going to be more full than it ever has been because there's yeah. a sense of optimism. How proud will you be stood there just soaking it up and, uh, and seeing what it means to people at this football club? Because they didn't think they were going to have one. They Absolutely, no. Yeah. I, uh, it'll be emotional. It'll be uh, a real sense of, of um, achievement, but it's everyone's achievement, not just me or a company or financials. It's the club, it's the future, and uh, very proud. And the bottom line is I guess the hard work starts here, doesn't it? It certainly does start here, yes. <laughs>